One thing for me, I hope you're ashamed of yourself. You should be. It's 70 degrees out. You have bunny boots on. Welcome! This is a uh, first ever preview of uh, what I'm going to be doing or quick run. Now here's the deal. This video I'm trying to aim it where it's going to be released right before I go out and film this location. I will have a cell phone streaming bamboozer on a very low quality but nonetheless it should be streaming. And I'll put the link of that in the description below so this way you can possibly catch it when this uh, happen when I start uh, filming doing the First Amendment test. Now as you can see here we have J Bear Base and if you remember them from our prior video uh, from last year they got really uppity when I did my First Amendment test. Well we're gonna go back and see if they improved upon themselves on that issue. Also there will be a twist. We are going to be operating the UAS in this area well during this test at the same time. Now the trick is, is there's a lot of big legality stuff that we have to deal with when we're dealing, doing this. And we're going to go over that real fast with this little preview video. We're going to go over the legalities and some education on that part. Now as you can notice, right up here there is an airstrip which is going to be a big huge issue. And over here is the other one. That, and the thing is, is I'm going to be filming along this highway area. Oh, and on top of that... We're going to be butting up against some issues with airspace. So let's go ahead and hit the sky vector real fast. And as you can see, here is the two airstrips that will be operating within five miles of, according to the FAA regulations for model aircraft. We must, can't well, we can't fly within five miles of an airport unless you contact the airport and control tower before flying. We'll be notifying the airport before uh, flying. And the thing is, is, we're also going to be flying in unrestricted airspace. As you can see, there is a bunch of Class D and other kinds of uh, restricted airspace in the area. Let's go ahead and go over the Class D airspace. Now, the base, well, you can see it's very crowded here. You can barely make out all the lines, but thank goodness someone on the chart got uh, smart and said, hey, let's uh, make this a little bit easier to understand. So if you zoom over to the margin on the Sky Vector chart here, you can see where the Class D airspaces all have their boundaries and they're organized into various kinds of segments. And the one we got to be concerned ourselves with is this border right here, which goes right along the highway. So as long as I stay on the highway in this area, you pop better on the other side, we're going to have no problems. We'll be within the proper airspace. The other issue is this restricted airspace R-2203. Now since we won't be operating in that area or right up next to it, we're not going to worry too much, but I still want to educate you on that real fast. So let's go ahead and look at that. Now restricted airspace, we don't really have that much information on that, but I was able to dig out a better chart on that issue. And this one better explains where all the restricted airspaces. And now on the sky vector chart, if you go back and look, well on here it says, R-2203, but over here it says 3C. Well, it turns out that entire area is separated into three spots, C, B, and A, and part of the reason for that is the different altitudes. Now, C is up to 5,000 feet above sea level, while the other two is 11,000 feet. We're not obviously going to try to fly over that because we're stuck to being staying under 400 feet. Nonetheless, the other thing to keep an eye out is it does go over part of Eagle River, which is off post. So people in Eagle River, please be careful if you fly U.S. Don't fly in that this general area that could get you in some trouble there. Uh, from a air traffic controller told me a couple, last week, this is not always restricted. It does open up, but it's just better to be safe than sorry. Just this way, you're not getting any kind of trouble and all that stuff. So. Back onto the other stuff. Now, the thing is, we also have to worry about is the airports and contacting them. Well, thank goodness, our side vector charts give us the dots for the airports, and then we can load up the pages for each one. And here is the airfield that's right by the gate there where I'm looking the film. And here is Elmendorf's number where was it right here right in this spot so we'll be making sure to call them up and notify them say hey we're going to be operating within five miles 
and we're going to be operating in unrestricted airspace. Uh, so this way, we don't have to seek permission. If we end up flying within the Class D airspace, we have to seek permission from the air traffic controller that controls that area. So that gives us the, pretty much the good rundown on the legal mumble jumbo. Oh, and last but not least, we need to check for flights. Uh, FTRs, where is my page for that? I had that up here. Okay, I'll bring it up here in a second. Okay, got the page up. Sorry, I miscall that. They're called TFRs, Temporary Flight Restrictions. And we have to make sure the state of Alaska is good to go. So we have to go ahead and pull up the state. And guess what? There's no TFRs. Of course, I'll have to check this thing first thing in the morning before I go out and uh, film and all that stuff. But the other thing is, is they'll also give you a number to contact. Now, I called this number a couple times to check. And what it does is all, it routes you pretty much to the nearest air traffic control tower that has the information about uh, temporary flight restrictions. Almost pretty much every single time I have called this number and asked, there has been no flight restrictions at all uh, when this has been shown. So I'm not really too concerned on calling them up because I haven't seen any temporary flight restrictions turn up in the last week or so. So we're pretty good on that part, but of course I'll check to make sure. And one other thing I wanted to cover before I leave off with you guys is there is a 1946 Supreme Court case over ownership of airspace kind of thing. And this is for dealing with possible trespass issues we might run into with the gate guards or police or federal police or whatever. So pretty much what happened was back in 1946, a farmer was having his chickens getting killed off by aircraft flying way too low. They were scaring the chickens and they were hurting themselves and hurt, uh, killing themselves in the process. Anyway, what it boiled down to was that Congress has defined navigable airspace as public domain. And they were finding the aircraft were flying right around 83 feet above his land and they considered that part of the public domain easement or public access easement for flying. So, airspace pretty much uh, uh, above the controlling structures that are built on the land is considered public access and you're free to fly in. Now, that pretty much cut dry thing on that issue. So you wouldn't be able to say I'm trespassing if I'm flying 83, 100 feet above someone's property if I'm flying my uh, Phantom 2 or whatever. So that's the nice little rundown of information real fast. As I said, I'll put uh, have a link for Bamboozer so this way you can see it live. If not, you'll probably end up catching the remnants and I'll have uh, video footage from uh, the Phantom put up as soon as I can along with the interaction. Hopefully everybody passes on the test this time around and knows their rules and regulations. I'll also put down a link to all the information that I have shown here. Well, links in the description below. So this way you can double check and know about the information that, uh, for yourself if you decide to fly. Just remember, contact the air traffic controller or at least the airport manager and let them know you're going to be flying within five miles in unrestricted airspace if you end up flying. So talk to you guys later.